Hi everyone and welcome back to the shack for part 2 of this ZX Spectrum 48K project that was great fun to build but when we turned it on for the first time we discovered it was only displaying a black and white picture and I couldn't figure out why. I asked you all for comments and suggestions and thanks to all of you who offered advice. So did we get it sorted? Of course we did, kind of, in a roundabout way, ish. Here at The Shack, we'd like to give a huge thank you to the sponsor for this video, PCBWay. They help us out with all of our PCB fabrication needs and make fantastic boards at amazingly competitive prices. And it's not only PCBs that are on the menu. Apart from other fabrication services like CNC machining, 3D printing, sheet metal fabrication and injection moulding, PCBWay also have a great projects library of cool stuff to build from people all around the world. Oh, and if you don't like waving a soldering iron about, they can even assemble your PCBs for you. That's the PCB way. Right, on with the show. So I checked that the TV supports S-Video natively, and it does. I tried replacing the S-Video out with a composite out, still black and white. I tried propping up the LM 12 volt voltage with an external source. I replaced the LM 1889 with a known good one too, in fact. I checked all the voltages were correct. I checked all the transistors were correct and working. I tried a known working original ULA. I checked all the components around the video circuitry to make sure there were no shorts or bad soldering. I checked the frequency of the crystals. It was still only displaying black and white. And then I thought, what if it's more than one problem? It occurred to me that the S-Video board may be faulty and I may have had a faulty LM1889 because I'd put the S-Video board back onto this PCB before I changed the LM1889 and I hadn't tried the LM1889 from this board in another spectrum. Could it just be the timing of how I tested things? So I went ahead, took out the S-Video board again and in its place put in this still brand new but nowhere near as nice looking composite mod board from my recently refurbished Spectrum Plus. Now, let's see what happens when we plug in the new Spectrum with the new composite board now that we know everything else on the board is good. Colour, would you Adam and Eve it? So this board works with this composite mod and for the purpose of this video I'm happy because it all works and I can look at the S-Video board itself as a separate exercise. So now we've got colour, we'll let it run through the memory diagnostics to make sure the new RAM boards are working. and they look fine too. Of course, at this point, I can't run any of the other diagnostics because I don't have a keyboard attached. Should we attach a standard Spectrum 48K keyboard? Nah, let's build a brand new mechanical keyboard with Cherry MX compatible switches. Okay, while the soldering iron is warming up, let's take a closer look at this PCB designed by Superfo and sourced through PCBWay's shared projects page. I've had this fabricated in black to match the main Spectrum PCB and as usual, PCBWay have done an excellent job. The board is designed to take the standard Cherry MX compatible switches of which there are a million different colours, ones that light up, ones that click and ones that are just a nice retro feel, a bit like an Acorn Electron or Commodore 64. There are two pins to solder per key and there are also locator pins so you can only fit them to the board in one orientation. Right. Let's solder these bad boys in.
looking good. The original Spectrum 48K rubber keyboard used a membrane with these flexible ribbons that connected to the mainboard. For this mechanical keyboard, I've got these ribbon cable strips and on one end, they're soldered to small PCBs to go into the connections on the mainboard and on the other end, they're just plain wire to solder to the keyboard PCB. So let's get these soldered in too. There we go. Lovely. Right, time to test. Now, this should just pop into the board like the normal Spectrum membrane. And then we'll see if it works. Well, I can press 1 to enter the keyboard test, so that's a good start. But, hmm... Not all of the keys are working, in fact most of them aren't. Putting a rubber keyboard and membrane in proves that the problem isn't with the Spectrum but with the new keyboard. This isn't giving us a smooth ride at all, is it? So let's see what's causing this issue. We'll hook up the keyboard to the multimeter and do a continuity check against the matrix. If we hook up trace 1 of 5 on the left and 1 of 8 on the right, we should be able to find the key that when pressed completes the circuit. There are 4 rows of 10 keys equals 40 keys, and there is a 5 line and an 8 line cable, 5 times 8 equals 40, so each combination is triggered by just one key. So we know that the number 1 key works, and that's triggered at cable 1 of 5 and 1 of 8. Let's move the clips to 1 of 5, 2 of 8, and that should trigger another key. And it does. Q. Nice. 1 of 5, 3 of 8 gives us A, and so on. So let's see what's not working to isolate where the problem might be. Well, to save you wasting your time like I did, I'll cut to the chase. It wasn't the PCB or any of the switches, it was the cables. Several of the wires inside had no connectivity and when I checked, they'd broken at the solder joint. So I decided to take drastic measures. After all, we are in the pursuit of a brand new Spectrum with a brand new keyboard. Firstly, I removed the existing membrane connectors from the PCB and replaced them with standard headers. I then put standard headers here on the keyboard too. And then I join them up with some header wires, much more robust and very Spectrum-like too with all the colours. Right, let's test it out. I've put these keycaps on for now, they don't have all of the Spectrum's keywords on, but I have plans for that in the next video. There's going to be a part 3 I hear you cry? Well, yes there is, and I'll explain why whilst we run through the diagnostics on this board and make sure we're all at 100% now. So hopefully we've now got a brand new Spectrum 48K mainboard with everything except the LM1889 being a new part. We've also got a brand new keyboard with all new parts. So my little tiny brain then thought, perhaps we can put it all in a brand new case. A brand new case. Perhaps something I could design myself. Perhaps a reimagining of what the Spectrum could have looked like if I was in charge, God forbid. And that's what I've done. 
and here's a sneak peek of the design which is currently in fabrication by our good friends at PCB Way, and it'll be winging its way to me in a few days time. While I've been nattering, I've run the board through all the diagnostics and it's passed every one, so I'm now a happy bunny. Please join me in the next episode when we'll put all of this together and there'll be details of a special little competition to celebrate the completion of this project. I hope you've enjoyed the journey so far. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and to give the video a thumbs up to appease the gods of YouTube algorithms. So, until next time in the shack, it's goodbye from me. Whilst I was at it, I replaced that old speaker with this lovely new one too, as promised.